Welcome to Great Talking Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where we review movies and TV shows and much more from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and other things to review. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for checking us out, supporting us, and all that good stuff, baby. Now, this is the uh, episode 6 for the new Marvel show, Hawkeye, on Disney+. And this is definitely the final episode. And of course, spoilers alert, this is a spoiler. If you haven't seen this whole series yet, go watch it. Enjoy your happy holidays. Have a good Christmas and much more. And come back then, check out this review. And let me know in the comment what you think about this show, okay? All right, let's get into it, baby. The final episode of this series brought us many surprises while giving us four different stories that's given us a glimpse of the future of Marvel shows and Marvel movies slash films. This episode was an amazing storytelling that ended this show very well with high-packed fighting scenes as we learned that Kate's mom Eleanor Bishop was not really working for the Kingpin as a business partner. She was actually only working for him to pay off some debt that her husband owed the Kingpin. And he was definitely not happy when she wanted to cut ties with him because obviously he is a criminal. He is the mob. He's the Kingpin. He runs New York so he was definitely mad and <laughs> anybody who wants to leave the kingpin oh they're gonna leave the kingpin just in a well I guess a body bag but so honestly I'm glad that uh, Eleanor Bischoff was not one of the uh, quote unquote villains of this series I'm glad that in this episode we discovered that she was only doing this to protect Kate that Kate kept getting closer and closer and she started to figure out some stuff so yeah she was like no I gotta end this because this is gonna get Kate killed and she's trying to protect her daughter so definitely glad that she's on the good guy side of this show or any Marvel film or show and I feel like if they wanted to do a Kate Bishop solo film um and went like i said i'm so glad that she's not uh lauren uh or not lauren but eleanor bischoff sorry eleanor bischoff i think kate and eleanor could do a mother-daughter story format in a, in a kate bischoff solo film and i think this would be a great thing to use just because one throughout this whole show kate's mom always feels like that she doesn't understand what consequences are because she's been very protected because Eleanor is reminding us that Kate Bishop is is born into a very rich family you know as far as, as, far as finance like money wise basically and that she's been living a upper class life her whole life and you know this kind of goes back to when she says there's only two people who are who think they're like untouchable basically and that's uh, rich people and people who were never born poor and so this could be like a, a solo film with Kate Bischoff this could definitely you know be worth a movie to put out in theaters and stuff because like I said, they can use the mother-daughter storytelling format, and this could help people, like, well, just Marvel f superhero fans, movie fans, Marvel fans, whatever, to kind of relate to Kate, especially for the female audience and stuff. So I think there's a big opportunity in that, and that's why I really like this. Kind of like how they did uh, Spider-Man and uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. They can kind of do that. Um, let's go into the next topic of uh, the kingpin. Is the kingpin dead or alive? 
So, in episode six, you know, Echo puts a gun to her to um, Kingpin after Kingpin tries to uh, murder Kate Bishop's mom, but did not succeed because Kate Bishop took a beating from Kingpin. But you know, at the end, Kate's uh, mother ran him over with a car, and he survived which is uh, one of Kingpin's like abilities is he can take these heavy hits and just live. Um, and I'm sure they're going to justify that and how he did it with s some type of solution, like a science format in a way, which that's fine. It's cool. But I think Kingpin is still alive. Uh, just it's the old uh, Hollywood entertainment of uh, quote. Um, the character's not dead unless you see the body on the camera, on screen, basically. I don't remember the actual quote, but basically, the char a character's never really dead unless you see it on camera or on the screen, basically. So, no, I think he's still alive. I think he's going to mostly going to show up in the uh, Echo series, and I think that him and Daredevil will definitely show up in Echo. I think that this is the way to bring back those two Netflix uh, Marvel characters and it seems like they're kind of going with it but they did go pretty dark and that's one of the and like I said there was four different stories in this episode so this is one of the this is probably one of the uh, one of the stories I was talking about is this one's a little bit darker so it, they're kind of saying, yeah, we, we can go dark on Disney Plus because even though Kingpin wasn't as dark as he was on the Netflix show Daredevil, but it was pretty dark for a, a Disney Plus show. So, you know what? I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it because we got him back. So I'm happy. I'll take it. Uh, which we'll go into the next topic. Echo. I think her story continues on her new show, Echo. I think she's going to I think she's going to become one of the young Avengers uh members. I just think that with this I think there's such more so such much more to her story and they didn't really explain it in the Hawkeye series. They did a little bit, but I think we're going to get a more understanding of what was going on. You know, where was she at? here and there and timeline and you know there's going to be a lot of theories and predictions will we be answered whether they're right or wrong obviously um like here's one I think I think she was once part of the Black Widow I think she was trained in the Red Room at some point I think Kingpin I think Kingpin has connections to that because like I said um I just think he knows some people. I mean, Kingpin is a big mobster, and he's very powerful. So I, I would imagine he would have those type of connections at that time. And I'm sure they're going to explain that real soon in a future show or Marvel film. I think Echo, I also think, I think they'll sh put Echo, the character Echo, in uh, Captain America 4. I think that she'll be part of that too at, in a Marvel film. And then our next character that we got to talk about is slash topic, obviously, Hawkeye's wife, Laura Barton. Now, obviously, we just learned that throughout the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe since first Avengers movie, yep, the first Avengers movie, that a whole time, Laura Barton was the Mockingbird. She was part of the Mockingbird. She's a former Agent Shield member, and that time that whole Rolex watch was her, because when they looked turn it around, it was the Agents of Shield uh, logo, and it had the number nineteen. So she is literally one of the uh, original Agents of Shield back to like when Nick Fury. So basically, we just learned that. If you want to do timeline, think think like back as the Captain Marvel film. Captain Marvel takes place in the uh, 80s and 90s. 
but more 90s when Captain Marvel's is in as an adult basically and we see a young Nick Fury well that just explains that Laura Barton's been a ri an original Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. member since then and that's pretty impactful that's very impactful very important and I do hope that they explain her story her backstory and then maybe they will in uh, Marvel's secret invasion I think she's gonna be a part of that and I believe Hawkeye will too I think I think those two people will be in the secret invasion series as well does this mean Agents of shield is canon to the MCU honestly from the looks of it I would say yes but I know that they said that it was not going to be. So I don't I don't really know, but I think I'm gonna go with yes, because that's very important. I mean, Agent Agents of Shield is no longer existing in in storyline of the whole Marvel timeline. But it's still the idea that if you go back to Agents of Shield, the first couple of seasons I think I want to say episode season one through three maybe and maybe more I'm not really I'm not, I can't really remember but they but anyway they were very connected to the Marvel films they reference the Avengers uh, New York battle they reference many other Marvel characters including Thor and stuff like you know I think I think they're still canon and you know, I just think Agents of Shield is gonna is gonna have a comeback or be very important of uh, continuing these uh, Marvel films in story wise. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, I think Agents of Shield is very canon to the MCU as of now. Um, it doesn't mean that oh they're gonna make another show of it. I mean they could and they they might not. But I'm saying like. I think you know how like they always reference the uh, Incredible Hulk movie with Ed Norton you know but they never talk about the fact that it's two different actors or whatever it's gonna be something like that like you know you might not want to watch the movie you might not want to watch the show because they don't feel like it's a part of the MCU but it is they're both canon to it and this uh helps build the story up basically so i'm gonna have to go with yes again <laughs> um jack duquesne i think he'll i think he's gonna reappear again in you know many marvel films and shows i think he'll definitely uh he's gonna be a mentor to kate as far as like training like for example hawkeye is good with the arrows but Jack Duquesne is good with the swords and I think that's he's going to be a big mentor to teach her how to be better at using a sword basically I know I know it's, it's called um, I forgot the name <laughs> but anyway it, she's going to he's going to be a really good trainer and mentor to help her become better I think she'll uh, I think I think I think Jack Duquesne will be in the uh, Echo series and possibly I, I could see him being the Young Avengers whether it's a, in a movie or, or a show but I could definitely see him that uh, let's talk about Kate Bishop just to get there you know as I said you know I think she's gonna show up in the next um, Ant-Man movie uh, Crotomania and I think that this is gonna also teach her how to be better with creating her own arrows without getting help from Hawkeye I think you know she's gonna figure out like hey how do I get this Stark tech how do I get this these arrows to make people shrink or become giants basically and she's going to be a part of it I whether it's a post credit scene or actually in the whole film who knows right but 
she's definitely going to be one of the young Avengers. And I think this is what's going to bring us to it is I think the next time we'll see Kate, if we don't see Kate and Echo, we'll definitely see her in the next Ant-Man film, which is Quantumania. So I, it's just got to be that, you know, it's I could see that happen. Um, let's talk about no Spider-Man. There was no Spider-Man. And I know a lot of people were hoping just because, you know, how the film took place and it led to Christmas. The reason why I don't think he's showing up is because of that spell. Because Hawkeye does not remember. Remember, he, he, he was in New York. Well, not in New York, but he said, Dr. Strange pretty, pretty much said when he made that spell the second time, is everybody he who knows him and loves him basically around in the whole world they were going to they were going to remember him but they can't because everybody in the world who knows spider-man that was peter parker does not remember that no more basically and hawkeye was one of them so it makes sense why again spider-man didn't show up and two he doesn't remember hawkeye doesn't remember that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And the reason being too is because like I said, it was that spell, so it makes sense now. Now, could he just uh, reappear in the show? Yes, but I think what they're doing is Marvel Studios is committing uh, to make sure that the spell is the reason why Spider-Man doesn't show up in Disney Plus films. And if you wanna be political about it, uh, Sony owns the right to Spider-Man basically and still does so obviously they're not going to just put Spider-Man in a Disney Plus show like that unless unless it makes sense to them basically and you know what as much as that it sucks it's, it's not fun but hey it is what it is but just remember <laughs> They gave us Spider-Man No Way Home. And yeah. Yeah, we got a lot. So I'm okay with that. If I had to, 1 out of 10, if I had to give this show, I'm giving this show an 8. It was a great show. A great episode. I just think that it was really good. And I definitely want more. They haven't really announced a lot about if a lot of these uh, Marvel shows on Disney Plus will be getting a season two. And I definitely hope, maybe next year, I know next year is when, next year they will, they will reveal all the new shows and hopefully they'll get the season twos on a lot of these. And I definitely hope so. Probably by like next year of summer, they'll start dropping teaser trailers and or just making announcements because you know you got Comic Con, New York Con, everything. You got Disney Disney Con or whatever, Disney Plus Day. You know they they got a lot, and I, they're definitely gonna announce. But if they don't do season two, I just hope they give us more Marvel Disney Plus shows, obviously, and movies, of course. So thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Great talk entertainment subscribe hit the notification button so you can always be updated with the latest content peace